Hey guys, welcome back to part 23 of the Kotlin tutorial. So in part 4, we put the username and age variables directly into our main function. But instead of declaring these variables loosely like this, it makes more sense to think of a user as one cohesive thing. So let's create a class for it. Let's just delete all our code. And then we type in main. And when this pop-up appears, we press enter, which creates a new main function. This is a so-called live template. And that's just an IDE feature to insert commonly used code snippets more quickly. Below the main function, so below the closing curly brace, we don't create another function. Instead we write class, which is the keyword to create a class, just like fun is the keyword to create a function. Then we type user, which is the name we give this class, and the class name should start with an uppercase first letter, and it should be a noun that describes what this class represents. If it's multiple words, we write it in Pascal case like Kotlin tutorial KT. And as usual, the content of this class goes between curly braces. So let's put a name and age variable in here, like we previously had it in the main function. They have to be a val or var, just like any other variable we have seen before. The first one is the name. Let's set it to a string. I'm going to give it my name. The other one is a var age, and we set it to 29, or whatever value you want. The syntax is the same as for variables outside of a class, and it also supports type inference. But before we talk about this code in more detail, let's see how we can create a user object from it. So we go into the main function, then we write val user. The variable name doesn't have to be the same as the class name, but it makes sense in this case. Equals, and then we write user with a capital U, because this is our class name, and an empty pair of parentheses. And we have now created an object of the user class and stored it in this variable. For strings and primitive types we have literals, but our own objects we create like this. It looks like a function call, but with the class name. And Java devs will immediately have noticed that we don't use the new keyword here, because in Kotlin it's not necessary. And when we uh, write down this user variable and press our Control shift p shortcut to see its type, we can see that it now indeed has the data type user which is the type we just created. We could also declare the user type explicitly on our variable and the same type checking as for other types applies. So we can't assign this to a, a string, for example, because this is not the appropriate type. So let's revert this and we can now access the name and age variables via dot notation on this user variable, like we've already seen before. So let's print that to the console. We write println username colon, a dollar sign for a string placeholder, user.name, and it automatically adds these curly braces. Then we duplicate this line to also print the user age. And when we run this, it prints these values to the console. Nothing special, but these values are now contained in one user object. We also call this user object an instance of the user class. Just like a string object is an instance of the string class. And the process of creating the object is called instantiation. We instantiate the user class to create an instance of it. But don't get confused by the terminology. As usual, you don't have to remember that right away. It will come naturally after a while. And now we can change the value of h if we want, because h is a var, but we can change the username, because it's a val, which means it's read-only. So the same concepts as for normal variables apply. For Java devs, this might look like we are accessing a public field here, which we know is bad because of encapsulation, but we actually aren't. This is the equivalent of a private field with public getter and setter methods, but more on that later. But even though we can change the age value, all objects of the user class will be called Florian, and they all will start out at age 29. If we would instantiate more user objects, they would all have the same characteristics. But in the previous video we said that the class is just a blueprint, and each object has their own characteristics. Right now we can basically only create a clone army. So instead of hard coding name and age into this class, we want to define them when we create the object. For example when a user signs up in our app. So we change the user class the following way. Like in a function, we add a pair of parentheses behind user and declare parameters that we want to pass. So a name string and an age in form of an int. 
then we assign these values to the classes variables. We ignore these IDE hints for now, and then we can see that we get a warning in our main function, because it now expects that we pass a name and age value, just like we have to pass arguments to a function. So let's pass Hans 30, and then we copy paste this, delete this line here, and the second user will be a Elfriede 60, and then let's rename our variables with shift F6 to user 1 and this one to user 2. And when we run it, we now have two distinct user objects created from one and the same class. This part up here is called the constructor. We call it when we create an instance of this class. As the name implies, the constructor constructs an object and prepares it for use. And for that we can define parameters that we want to pass when we create this object. And then assign their values to the class's variables. Actually, we refer to these variables that are part of a class as properties, and we will use this term henceforth. Properties work a bit differently than normal variables that we use inside a function, but we will learn more about that later. The only thing that matters for now is that these properties represent the attributes that all objects made from this class have, as we talked about in the previous video. So each user object right now has a name and an age. And we refer to the values of these properties as the object's state. So Hans30 is the state of user1 and Elfriede60 is the state of user2. And similar to a top-level variables, properties can't stay uninitialized. So we can't write var h of type int and assign it later. All properties need values assigned when the object is constructed or instantiated. Actually, this is not 100% true, but more on that later. But we already noticed these IDE warnings here, so let's hover over them. Property is explicitly assigned to a parameter h, can be declared directly in the constructor. So we click on this little light bulb. And if this light bulb doesn't appear, just click anywhere else, then click on H again, then it should appear, and then we use this quick fix, move to constructor. We do the same for name. And what this just did is moving the val and raw keywords directly into the constructor to the name and age parameters. This now does the exact same as before. It declares two properties, name and age, and automatically initializes them with the values that we pass when we instantiate the user. But it does so in a more concise syntax. Generally, it's good to avoid code application whenever possible, because this makes the code easier to maintain. And when we run it again, it still works the same as before. Okay, so now our code is already a bit more organized, but the real power of classes will show over the next parts when we learn about them in more in-depth, so don't forget to subscribe to not miss that. And similar to functions, we can call this part up here the class's header, and the part between the curly braces the body. Now since the body is empty right now, we could remove these curly braces, but we keep them here because we will add more code to this class body in the upcoming parts. We also haven't added any functions to this class yet, we will also do that later. But one more thing, just like functions, class constructors support named arguments and default values. And your homework is to change the user constructor in a way that name is automatically set to a no name by default, and then create a user 3 by only passing the age, and then print these values to the console just like we did for user 1 and 2. As usual, you are welcome to post your solution in the comments below. And then we see us in the next part. Take care.